Global warming is the long-term increase in Earth's average surface temperature, primarily caused by the release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere by human activities, such as burning fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, for energy, deforestation, and industrial processes. These greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, trap heat in the atmosphere, which causes the Earth's temperature to rise. The consequences of global warming are widespread and can include more frequent and severe heat waves, droughts, wildfires, floods, and storms, as well as rising sea levels and the loss of biodiversity. These impacts can affect human health, food security, water resources, and infrastructure, among other things. Efforts to mitigate global warming include reducing greenhouse gas emissions, transitioning to renewable energy sources, improving energy efficiency, and developing new technologies to capture and store carbon dioxide. Adaptation measures, such as building sea walls and improving water management, may also be necessary to cope with the impacts of global warming that are already unavoidable. Electric cars are vehicles that run on electricity instead of gasoline or diesel fuel. They use electric motors powered by rechargeable batteries to propel the car forward. Electric cars are considered a more environmentally friendly alternative to traditional gasoline-powered cars because they produce zero emissions from the tailpipe, reducing air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. Electric cars can be charged at home or at public charging stations, which are becoming more widespread. There are also different types of electric cars, including plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, PHEVs, which have both an electric motor and a gasoline engine, and battery electric vehicles, BEVs, which rely solely on electric power. Electric cars have some advantages over traditional cars beyond environmental benefits. They often have lower fuel costs, as electricity can be cheaper than gasoline, and they require less maintenance because they have fewer moving parts. However, they typically have a higher upfront cost than gasoline-powered cars, and their driving range may be limited, depending on the battery capacity. As technology continues to improve, electric cars are becoming more affordable, with longer ranges and faster charging times. Governments around the world are also offering incentives and promoting the adoption of electric cars to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and combat climate change. If the Earth increases its mean temperature by 2 degrees Celsius, 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, it will have significant impacts on our planet's climate, ecosystems, and human societies. This level of global warming is considered dangerous, and scientists have warned that it could lead to irreversible changes in the Earth's systems. Some of the potential impacts of a 2 degree Celsius temperature increase include More frequent and intense heat waves, leading to heat-related illnesses and deaths. More severe and frequent droughts, leading to water scarcity, food insecurity, and wildfires. Rising sea levels due to the melting of ice caps and glaciers which could flood coastal cities and displace millions of people. More frequent and severe storms, including hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones, leading to property damage and loss of life. Biodiversity loss, as many species may struggle to adapt to the changing climate, leading to extinctions and ecosystem disruptions. To prevent a 2 degree Celsius temperature increase, it is essential to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and transition to a low-carbon economy. This requires significant efforts from individuals, businesses, and governments, including increased use of renewable energy sources, energy efficiency improvements, and changes in land use and agriculture practices. If Earth's ice caps were to melt completely, it would have significant and potentially catastrophic impacts on the planet's climate, ecosystems, and human societies. The ice caps, located at the poles, contain massive amounts of ice and play a critical role in regulating the Earth's temperature and ocean currents. If the ice caps were to melt completely, the following could happen. Rising sea levels, as the ice melts, it would increase the volume of water in the oceans, causing sea levels to rise. This could lead to flooding in coastal areas, submergence of low-lying islands, and displacement of millions of people. Climate change the ice caps reflect a significant amount of solar radiation back into space, which helps to regulate the Earth's temperature. Without the ice caps, the Earth's temperature would increase significantly, leading to more frequent and severe heat waves, droughts, storms, 
and other extreme weather events. Changes in ocean currents, the melting of the ice caps could alter ocean currents, which play a critical role in regulating global weather patterns. This could cause disruptions to ecosystems and agriculture, leading to food shortages and economic impacts. Biodiversity loss, the melting of the ice caps could also lead to the loss of biodiversity, as many species rely on the polar regions for survival. This could cause extinctions and ecosystem disruptions, leading to further impacts on human societies. It is important to note that while the complete melting of the ice caps is unlikely to happen in the near future, their gradual melting is already occurring due to climate change, and the impacts are being felt around the world. Efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate climate change are critical to preventing further melting of the ice caps and the associated impacts. Hurricanes are powerful and potentially destructive tropical storms that form over warm ocean waters in the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. They go through several stages of development, including the formation of a tropical disturbance, tropical depression, tropical storm, hurricane, and post-tropical cyclone. The Atlantic Hurricane Basin, which includes the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, is one of the most active regions for hurricane formation, with the Atlantic hurricane season running from June 1 to November 30. While hurricanes can be unpredictable, it is important to monitor official forecasts and follow evacuation orders and other safety precautions to protect oneself and one's property from the potential impacts of a hurricane. Hurricanes can get extremely bad, with high winds, heavy rainfall, and storm surges that can cause widespread destruction and loss of life. The intensity of a hurricane is measured on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, which ranges from Category 1, weakest, to Category 5, strongest. Some of the potential impacts of a strong hurricane include High winds, hurricanes can produce winds of over 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour, and gusts even higher, which can cause significant damage to buildings, power lines, and infrastructure. Heavy rainfall, hurricanes can produce enormous amounts of rainfall, which can cause flooding and landslides, leading to property damage, destruction of crops, and loss of life. Storm surges, hurricanes can create storm surges, which are walls of water pushed inland by the force of the wind. These surges can cause flooding, erosion, and damage to buildings and infrastructure along the coast. Tornadoes, hurricanes can also produce tornadoes, which can cause additional damage and destruction. The worst hurricanes in history have caused immense damage and loss of life. Hurricane Katrina, which struck the United States in 2005, caused over $100 billion in damages and over 1,800 deaths. In 2017, Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico causing over $90 billion in damages and over 3,000 deaths. As climate change continues to intensify, scientists predict that hurricanes may become stronger and more frequent, making it even more critical to take steps to mitigate the impacts of these powerful storms. This includes improving building codes and infrastructure, strengthening emergency preparedness and response, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions to mitigate climate change. The Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, which is used to measure the intensity of hurricanes, currently only goes up to Category 5, which represents sustained winds of 157 miles per hour 252 kilometers per hour or greater. The scale was developed in the 1970s and has remained unchanged since then. There have been suggestions in recent years to add a Category 6 to the scale to account for hurricanes that may be more intense than a Category 5 but this has not been officially adopted. The reason for this is that the current scale already accounts for the potential impacts of a Category 5 hurricane, which can cause catastrophic damage. It is also important to note that the intensity of a hurricane is not solely determined by wind speed, but also by other factors such as storm surge and rainfall. A hurricane with slightly lower wind speeds but with a larger storm surge or more rainfall can still be just as dangerous and destructive as a hurricane with higher wind speeds. In summary, while there is currently no official Category 6 on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, hurricanes can still be extremely dangerous and destructive, and it is important to take precautions and prepare for these storms regardless of their category. A hurricane typically goes through several stages as it forms, intensifies, and eventually dissipates. These stages are 
Tropical disturbance, this is the initial stage of a hurricane, where a group of thunderstorms forms in a specific area in the ocean, often near the equator. At this stage, the disturbance has no organized circulation or wind speeds of significance. Tropical depression, as the tropical disturbance becomes more organized and wind speeds increase, it can develop into a tropical depression. This is when the system starts to rotate around a center, and sustained winds of 38 miles per hour, 62 kilometers per hour, or less are observed. Tropical storm, if the tropical depression continues to intensify, it can eventually become a tropical storm. At this stage, the system has sustained winds of 39 to 73 miles per hour, 63 to 117 kilometers per hour, and it is given a name. This is when the storm begins to pose a significant threat to coastal areas. Hurricane, if the tropical storm continues to intensify and wind speeds reach 74 miles per hour, 119 kilometers per hour, or greater, it becomes a hurricane. Hurricanes are categorized on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, which ranges from category 1, weakest, to category 5, strongest. Post-tropical cyclone, as the hurricane moves over land or into colder waters, it loses its source of energy and begins to weaken. It can eventually become a post-tropical cyclone, which is a low-pressure system that no longer has tropical characteristics. Dissipation, eventually, the post-tropical cyclone will dissipate and the storm will no longer pose a threat. It is important to note that while hurricanes go through these stages, they can be unpredictable and their intensity can fluctuate rapidly. It is important to monitor official forecasts and follow evacuation orders and other safety precautions to protect oneself and one's property from the potential impacts of a hurricane. Hurricanes form in various locations throughout the world but the majority of them occur in the tropical and subtropical regions of the Atlantic Ocean, known as the Atlantic Hurricane Basin. This basin includes the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, as well as the western and eastern coasts of North America. The Atlantic hurricane season officially runs from June 1 to November 30, with the peak of the season typically occurring from late August through September. This is when sea surface temperatures are typically the warmest and atmospheric conditions are most conducive to hurricane formation. In addition to the Atlantic Basin, hurricanes can also form in other regions of the world, including the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, and the South Atlantic Ocean. The Pacific Ocean, in particular, is known for its active hurricane seasons, with the Eastern Pacific hurricane season running from May 15 to November 30 and the Western Pacific Typhoon season running year-round. Overall, the exact location where hurricanes form can vary from year to year, and the frequency and intensity of hurricane activity can be influenced by various factors such as sea surface temperatures, atmospheric conditions, and climate patterns. The Earth's climate is complex and influenced by various factors, including natural cycles, human activities, and external events such as volcanic eruptions and solar activity. While there is still ongoing research on the exact mechanisms behind changing weather patterns, some factors that may be contributing to colder winters in certain regions include Changes in the Arctic The Arctic region has experienced significant warming in recent decades, causing the sea ice to shrink and the Arctic Ocean to absorb more heat. This can lead to changes in atmospheric pressure and wind patterns, which can cause colder air to move southward into certain regions. Natural climate cycles the Earth's climate is influenced by natural cycles, such as El Nino and La Nina, which can cause changes in temperature and precipitation patterns around the world. These cycles can last for several years and can cause colder winters in some regions. Human activities, human activities, such as the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation, release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which trap heat and contribute to global warming. While global warming can cause overall temperatures to rise, it can also lead to more extreme weather events, including colder winters in some regions. Variations in solar activity, the sun's energy output varies over time, which can affect the Earth's climate. While solar activity is not currently believed to be a major factor in recent colder winters, it can still have some impact on regional weather patterns. Overall, while there are various factors that may contribute to colder winters in certain regions, the exact mechanisms behind changing weather patterns are complex and still not fully understood. However, 
it is clear that the Earth's climate is changing, and taking steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate the impacts of climate change is crucial for ensuring a stable and sustainable future for our planet. There is no direct evidence to suggest that global warming causes an increase in volcanic activity. Volcanic activity is primarily driven by geological factors, such as the movement of tectonic plates, and internal heat sources within the Earth's mantle. While there is no direct causal link between global warming and volcanic activity, there are some indirect effects that could potentially contribute to changes in volcanic activity. For example, melting glaciers and ice sheets caused by global warming could lead to changes in the Earth's crust, which could potentially trigger volcanic activity. Additionally, rising sea levels could cause changes in the pressure on the ocean floor, which could also potentially affect volcanic activity. However, it is important to note that these potential effects are still largely theoretical and have not been definitively proven. Furthermore, volcanic activity is highly unpredictable and influenced by a wide range of factors, making it difficult to draw direct causal links to any single factor. Overall, while global warming is known to have significant impacts on the Earth's climate and natural systems, there is currently no direct evidence to suggest that it causes an increase in volcanic activity.